The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by The Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let us see what fate has in store for the great Gildersleeve. Fate moves in mysterious ways. Here he comes now, in the uniform of the United States Postal Service. I'm coming. Uh, so is Christmas. Yes? Who is it, Bertie? Who is it, Bertie? Who is it, Bertie? Uh, special Bertie? delivery. I got a letter for it. Special delivery? Special delivery. Special delivery, huh? Oh, I'll be right down. No, 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 no. This is for the party next door. Only she ain't home, so I, I thought if you wouldn't mind giving it to her. What's more, Bertie? Is it for me? No, it's for Miss Ransom. Oh, well, she doesn't live here. She lives next door. Yeah, I know. I was just over there, but she ain't home, well, so... Well, it's special for me, by any chance. No, Leroy, it's for Miss Ransom. Oh, well, you got the wrong place, bud. She lives next door. I know. I was just over there. Be right there. You sign for it, Marjorie. Oh, nobody don't need sign for it. Uh, uh, all I'm asking delivery, is... eh? Well, I wonder who could be... Oh, this is for Mrs. Ransom. I'm afraid you've got the wrong address, my friend. Mrs. Ransom lives next door, 269. Right across the lot there. Hey, look. Give me back the letter. I'll take it back to the office. He was just over there, Mr. Gillsleeve. Miss Ransom ain't home. In that case, why don't you leave the letter here and let us give it to her when she comes home? That's all I'm asking. Well, all right. Jeepers. Why doesn't the man make himself clear? The letter on the mantle, Leroy. Dinner in about ten minutes, Miss Gill, please. All right, Bertie. Better get ready for dinner, Leroy. I am. Leroy, I said put the letter on the mantle. That's what I'm doing. You were doing nothing of the kind. You were holding the envelope up to the light. I saw you. We don't read other people's mail, my boy. It's not only bad manners, it's a criminal offense. Besides, it isn't done. You understand? Yes, sir. Could you make out anything? <laughs> too thick. Oh, uh, put it on the mantel, and I'll take it over to Mrs. Ransom after dinner. Why, it's Rock Martin. Ooh, hello, Leela. I saw your lights on, so I knew you were home. I just this minute got in. Do come inside. You're letting in the cold. Well, it's pretty late, but if you insist... Just came over to bring you a letter, Leela. Letter? Uh-huh. The postman left it while you were out. Special delivery. Here. Now, who could be writing to me? Spe Throckmorton! Oh, Throckmorton, I'm going to have to sit down. Oh? What's the matter? It's from Lightfoot. Who's Lightfoot? An Indian? No. <laughs> I told you about him. Lightfoot Dupree. The man who was engaged to my very best friend, Lula Jean Carruthers, down in Savannah. Oh, him. I feared this, Throckmorton. I feared it from the very start. Feared what? You don't even know what's in the letter. I know only too well. It's happened. They've broken off. And Lula Jean will never forgive me. Never. As if anything I could have done would have prevented it. I don't know what this is all about, Leela. You go down south and deliberately fall in love with some Indian who's already he in... He is not an Indian, Throckmorton. <laughs> He's a gentleman and a very charming one. And I didn't say I'd fallen in love with him. You did so. I said we were irresistibly attracted to each other. <laughs> That's different. Different? Yeah, How? Well, anyway, I, I knew it would never do, him being engaged to my very best friend and all. So we made a pact. We agreed not to see each other or even write to each other for a month. And at the end of that time, if we still felt the way we did, well... Well? Well, the month is up. And here's a letter from Lightfoot. Uh, Throckmorton, would you think it terribly rude of me if I read it? No, go ahead. I won't look. <laughs> I know it isn't good manners, but I'm so excited. You're sure you don't mind? No. Nope. Well, then. My dear Leela. <laughs> Leela, how do you know that this file Just a is... minute, Throckmorton. Just a minute. 
<laughs> oh, it's just as I feared. He's coming up Throckmorton. He's coming to Summerfield. Oh, I just knew. I mean, I wouldn't have had this happen to Lula Jean for the world, but, uh, well, there's no use crying over spilt milk, is there? You mean this fellow is actually... He says he's arriving tomorrow on a business trip. That's likely. Just happens to be coming to Summerfield on business, all the way from Georgia. Ha! Monkey business. <laughs> Throck, Martin, you mustn't talk like that. You'd be crazy about Lightfoot. I'm dying to have you meet him. Why don't you come over tomorrow night when he's here? I have to go bowling. Oh, please, Throckmorton. You could give up your bowling just this once. Please, for Leela. <laughs> what do I want to meet him for? Because I want you to. You just want to annoy me, that's all. Throckmorton, how can you say that? Say you could. <laughs> Confounded, Leela, are you really in love with this fellow? I don't know for sure, Throckmorton. It's it's so hard to be certain. I won't know till I see him again, I guess. But I will say this. He's one of the most charming gentlemen I've ever met. <laughs> and talented, too. What's so talented about him? Oh, everything. To begin with, he's a divine dancer. Simply divine. You say that about everybody, except me. <sighs> And he carries on the most delightful conversation all the time. Whispers little things in your ear. Man sounds like a gigolo. <laughs> Is he musical? Musical. Does he play the piano? Can he sing? Well, I've never heard him sing. Ah, Leela, that's no kind of a fella for you. You'd never be happy with him. What makes you say that? Remember all the fun we used to have together, you and I, Leela? When you'd play the piano and I'd sing. I remember very well. But a girl can't live on her memories. How'd, how'd you like it if I'd sing for you now, huh? Oh, Throckmorton, you get me so confused. You know how I am when you sing. <laughs> Come on, Leela. You play for me, huh? Oh, what's the use, Throckmorton? All that belongs to the past. It's dead. Why drag it up? Oh, come on. Just one song. For all Lang Syne, huh? Should old acquaintance be forgot? Should it, huh? And never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot? And days of all lang syne. I always cry when I hear that song. You do? I know. I know one you like. Here's one that'll cheer you up. Come on, you have to play this one. Play what? You sit right down there. What do you want me to play? Our song. Remember? Speak to me of love And say what I'm longing to hear Tender words of love Repeat them again, I implore you Speak to me of Leela Lightfoot, I mean Throckmorton oh! You want to break the piano? Yes! The great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. In the meantime, I'd like to ask this lady a question. Which do you like best for breakfast, toast or sweet rolls? Why, I prefer toast. And I like sweet rolls. Now, uh, what's your choice for dinner, bread or muffins? Oh, I'll take muffins. And I'd rather have bread. <laughs> we just can't seem to agree, can we? Mm, I think we can. At least we can agree that it takes a good spread to bring out the flavor of all kinds of bread. Yes, I'll agree with you on that. By the way, have you ever tasted parquet margarine? Yes, I have. Do you like it? Oh, I certainly do. And so do I. There, you see, we agree again. And that's something on which millions of people agree. 
Parquet margarine is preferred by millions to any other brand because it's still unmatched for fresh, sweet, delicate flavor. If you haven't tried Parquet, buy some soon and discover how good it tastes on bread, toast, and rolls. And remember, Parquet is only about half the price of costly spreads. Be sure to ask your food dealer for Parquet, the spread that tastes so good. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Weary from a hard day at the water department, he has trudged home through the autumn twilight, tripped over Leroy's bicycle on the walk in front of his house, and finally reached the sanctuary of his parlor. Excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve, did Judge Hooker catch up with you? Judge Hooker? No, Bertie. Was he looking for me? Yes, he said he might stop by. You didn't invite him to supper, did you, Bertie? No, sir. I saw my chance, but I refrained. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Bertie. Well, I'll handle him if he comes in. But let's not delay the meal now. When it's ready, just blow the whistle. Okay, Miss Gilfrey. Won't be long now. Oh, Leroy. How many times have I asked you not to slam the door? Sorry, young. Look, we got company. What? Evening, Gildy. Oh, it's you. Evening, Marjorie. You're looking very pretty. Thank you, Judge. Don't get up, Gildy. I wasn't going to, Judge. <laughs> I hope I'm not disturbing you. I figured you wouldn't be doing anything. This is the hour of the day I like to spend with the children. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's a little matter I'd like to discuss with you, uh, privately. You mean you want me to send the children out of the room? I try to run this family democratically, Horace. The parlor belongs to them as much as to anyone else. Then perhaps we could step into your study. Uh, Leroy, mind you, you go into my study for a few minutes, will you? And make it snappy. Okay, all right. You'll have to make it snappy too, Judge. We're reading in just a minute. I'll make it snappy. Gildy, uh, doubtless you recall we had the pleasure a year or so ago of acting as co-signers on a note of Leela Ransom's. I remember. What about it? As her financial advisor and attorney, naturally, I've tried to arrange her affairs so that she'd be in a position to pay the loan off. Well, how's she doing? She got the money, but now she doesn't want to use it to pay off the note. She wants to invest in television stock. Oh, for goodness sake. Gilda, you don't know what I go through with Leela. She's a lovely creature and all that, but by ginger. Well, I'll speak to her about this. Oh, if you would, Throckmorton, I'd be grateful. The hours I spend explaining things to her... Uh, she isn't in any financial difficulty, is she, Horace? Well, she's not too... Oh, she'd be all right, except she's continually doing something foolish. When can you see her, Gildy? I'm afraid she's going to plunge into television any minute if we don't stop her. Well, I'm seeing her this evening, Judge, as a matter of fact. Although I don't know how easy it'll be to bring this thing up. Why not? Well, she's got this southerner coming to see her. Wants me to meet him for some reason. Southerner? Yeah, some flame of hers passing through town. Is this fellow interested in her? I suppose so. He's come all the way up here. Maybe you'll marry her. I wish the Dickens somebody would marry her and straighten her out instead of me. Well, I don't think it's your job to... I don't think it's your job to find the man. You're not jealous, are you, Gildy? No, you old goat, I'm not jealous. <laughs> but that's no reason to marry her off to every Tom, Dick, and Harry that comes through town. I don't see you marrying her. You're just a dog in the manger, that's what you are. <laughs> I'm no dog, you dog. <laughs> And don't call this house a manger. Oh, you make me sick. Well, go on over there and hang around. It won't do you any good. What do you mean by that? I'll bet Leela wants this fella, and I'll bet she married. That's what you think. I'll show him a thing or two. By the time he... Excuse me. Huh? Oh, yes, Bertie. Don't to whistle. Oh, well, I didn't hear it, though. <laughs> Sorry, Judge. Supper. I'd ask you to stay, only we're a little short tonight. <laughs> I've dined, thank you. Uh, Good night, Lothario. Good night, you money-grubbing old Cupid. Dupree's here yet. Uh, here she comes. Well, I did... Oh, 
Throckmorton. Yeah, hello, Leela. You're early, aren't you? I don't know, am I? Well, of course you are. I said 8 o'clock, and it's only about 20 minutes off. Gracious, I'm hardly dressed. Oh, well, as long as I'm here. No, Throckmorton. I've got to finish dressing. Well, I'll wait downstairs here. No, please. I... Throckmorton, I just thought of something. Why, it's the luckiest thing you came early. Yeah, why is it? <laughs> I just remembered I haven't got a drop of nail polish in the house. I wonder if you'd mind running down to the drugstore for me. <sighs> nail polish? That takes hours to put on. Well, it's not for tonight. I'll need it first thing in the morning. Be a lamb now, Throckmorton. Run down and get me a bottle. By the time you get back, I'll be all dressed and everything. Well, uh, what color? Mr. Peavy will know, Throckmorton, but hurry. Oop. I wonder if she's trying to get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, PV. You got any nail polish? I'm in a hurry. Nail polish? Sure. I believe we have. What color? I don't know what color. Any color. Is uh, this for yourself or for a friend? <laughs> for a friend? What do you think? Well, I wondered. A lady, I presume. It's for Mrs. Ransom. Oh. She didn't like the polish she bought yesterday? Did she buy polish yesterday? Certainly. I sold it to her myself. Confound it. I knew she was sending me down here in a wild goose chase. Makes me so darn mad. What makes women behave the way they do, Peavy? I don't know, Mr. Gildersleeve, unless it's men. You... <laughs> Grab me some nail polish, will you, Peavy, and let me get out of here. Yes, sir. What color did you say? I didn't. What colors have you got? Well, they run the gamut all the way from pink to rose. Here's the chart. Well, pick any color. I can't tell one from another. And between you and me, neither can I, but... <laughs> women come in here, and they study over the chart, and they ask my advice. And I give it to them. <laughs> Peavy, you're a cynic. No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Just practical. Yes. Yeah, how about this color, Mr. Gildersleeve? That's a nice color. Goes with everything. <laughs> Bright enough for evening, not too bright for daytime. You can wear it. You've already it. told me, Peavy, that you know nothing about it, so spare me the sales talk. I guess the color won't scare anybody. Wrap it up. Yes, sir. Need any razor blades today? Nope. Tooth powder or mouthwash? No. I have a special on shaving lotion. Peavy, will you hurry it up? All I want is a nail polish, and I don't even need that. Just wrap it up and don't talk. Don't say a word. Well, well, I won't. Well, don't. Well, I won't. <laughs> The trouble with you is you've always got to have the last word. Well, now I wouldn't... There you go! He got it! <laughs> but she never thought I could make it so fast. Well, I do... Here I am again, Leela. Oh. Uh, yeah. uh, Throckmorton, did you go to the drugstore? Sure I did. Here's a nail polish. Oh, yes. Thank you. Well, do come in. I'm freezing. Great. Where's, uh, what's his name? Dupree. I don't know. I've been expecting him ever since 7.30. Uh, uh, sit down, won't you? You bet. Why don't we sit on the couch? I don't think I'll sit down just yet, Throckmorton. I'll just stand here by the fire. Hmm. You look nice there, too. Firelight gleams in your hair. Puts color in your cheeks. What did you say? I said the firelight gleams in your hair, puts color in your cheeks. Oh, thank you, honey. <laughs> matter with you, Leela? Don't you feel well? Why, yes, Rockmorton. I feel fine. You're acting kind of strange, as if I wasn't here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just absent-minded. Now, tell me all about what you've been doing today. Well, let's see. This morning... Oh, that must be right for it. Huh? Sit right there, Rockmorton. You hear Leela, you sure are a lovely sight to a lonesome stranger. Oh, thank you, Conscious. I salute you with a kiss I brought all the way from Savannah. How do they do it? <laughs> oh, you lied for too much, and I've got company. Come in, darling, just put your bags here in the hall. There. Now, come in here and meet Mr. Gildersleeve. 
Uh, 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 well? Lifer, I want you to meet one of my oldest and best friends in Summerfield, Throckmorton Gildersleeve. This is Lightfoot Dupree, Throckmorton. Uh, glad to know you, Mr. Dupree. Mr. Gildersleeve, it's an honor and a pleasure to make your acquaintance, sir. Uh, I just know you two boys are going to like each other a lot. Don't you think so? Oh, sure. <laughs> Oh, the, the only thing we could possibly fight over would be you, Leela. Well, I won't have it. I want you to be good friends. Uh, Lightfoot, did I tell you about Mr. Gildersleeve when I was down home? He's our water commissioner here in Summerfield. Water commissioner? Mm -hmm. My land, Leela, I hadn't realized you were moving in such important political circles. I'm just a servant of the people, Mr. Dupree. <laughs> But we've got a nice little water department, if I do say so myself. 10,000 domestic subscribers and between two and 300 business and industrial installations. You don't say. Well, you must be in a position to know pretty well what's going on around here. Well, I... Uh... Right, Foot, you haven't said a word about what's going on down in Savannah. Didn't you bring me any news? Uh, well, now, honey, let me recollect. Uh, I suppose you heard about the storm. Mm, everybody wrote me about that. But in general, the weather's been perfect. And then, of course, since the war's been over, business has been picking up right nicely. Oh, business. Tell me about the party. Uh, what business are you in, Mr. Dupree? Uh, Lightfoot is applying to Throckmorton. Ple oh, pardon me. Uh... I'm branching out a little, though, Leela. You know, Mr. Gildersleeve, the South is processing a good portion of its cotton these days. You don't say. Yes, sir. <laughs> the South is becoming a great industrial area. You Yankees will have to step, first thing you know. Well, competition is the life of trade. But remember, we've got the know-how up here. Oh, you have indeed, sir. But we're learning. Why the price of a yard of cotton processed... Oh, hush is... up, Lightfoot. I declare you're talking just like a Yankee yourself. Well, Leela, honey... Oh, tell Throckmorton about some of the parties we have down home, Lightfoot. He's never heard of the kind of parties we have. Well, now, wait a minute, Leela. I've been on some pretty good parties. So have you. What about the hayride? Right here in Summerfield. Oh, I know. Some of them have been all right. But up here, there's nothing gay and spontaneous and reckless about a party. Why, down home, you might ask six or eight people for supper and wind up with 20 people staying for two days. Sounds inconvenient to me. <laughs> oh, you see, Lightfoot, that's the trouble with the people up north. Well, Leela, we used to have a lot of fun, it's true. But if we're going to get anywhere commercially, we can't be gallivanting around to people's houses at all hours of the day and night. I have to be at my office every morning when the cotton exchange opens in New York. Lightfoot, did you have anything to eat on the train? You don't sound like yourself. Now, now, don't you worry about me, honey. I had some right nice lamb chops in the diner. Oh, lamb chops. That's no nourishment. You come out in the kitchen with me for a minute and help me bring in a few little things I'll fix. Well, I... We can just leave Throckmorton here with the evening paper and he'll be perfectly happy. Huh? <laughs> well, honestly, I, I don't really feel the need of a thing, Lee. Uh, Martin, why don't you go out and get the things while I stay here with Mr. Dupree? Well, um, how would it be if we all went out and helped? Of course, let's all go. Oh, well, I was only joking, y'all. You boys just sit here and get acquainted, and I'll fix everything. Oh, great. You sure you won't need any help? I'm quite sure. But don't you talk about me while I'm gone, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wonderful girl, that Leela. One of the finest girls I've ever known. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, what do you gentlemen up here think about reconversion? Reconversion? Well, there's a lot of angles to it, son. If the government will give us a free reign on prices and let up on taxes... Yes, yes. business. Just look at all these lovely sandwiches. Wow, and stuffed celery. <laughs> my, my. Leela, you remembered my weakness for anchovies. Oh, Leela never forgets. Uh, just help yourselves, will you? There's salt and pepper napkins on the tray. I feel hungry, and I thought. So do I, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, my goodness, Lightfoot. What's the matter with me? Do you realize I haven't even asked you about Lula Jean? Isn't that terrible, Throckmorton? Mm -hmm. My best friend... How is Lulie Jean, Lightfoot? Uh, <clears throat> just uh, fine, Leela. 
Looks like we'll be married in November. Here, yeah, try one of these ripe olives, Gildas. Thanks. Uh, November? <laughs> November, you say, Lifer? Uh, yes, uh, there's a cotton fabric convention in Chicago in November, so I thought we could take our wedding trip then and kill two birds with one stone. Oh. Terribly sorry you've had so little time between trains, Lightfoot, but I'm glad you stopped over just the same. Leela, honey, I declare I said to myself, I just can't travel another mile in this Yankee country without talking to a pretty Georgia girl. Oh, you. Uh, we better get going, Leela. All right, run along, Strock Martin, but drive carefully. I don't want anything to happen to Lightfoot. Leela, I'm sure Mr. Gildersleeve is a fine driver. Goodbye now, honey, and take good care of yourself. And if you don't come down for the wedding, Lula Jean will never forgive you. I'll do my best, Lightfoot. Uh, goodbye. Mm. Goodbye. Good night, Leela. Come on, Dupree. I'll drive you through the business section on the way. I'm coming right along. Goodbye. I might have liked the honeymoon in Chicago. Who's I? It's me, Leela. Uh, haven't got much time, Leela. Got to get Lightfoot to his train. Uh, but there's something I wanted to say to you all evening. You sure you want to say it now? I mean, you're sure this is the time? Yes, yes. It's important to both of us. What is it, Throckmorton? Don't put that money in television. Get out of my We'll hear more from the great Gildersleeve in just a few moments. One cheerful note you so often hear at breakfast tables throughout America is the sound of toast popping out of the toaster. My breakfast is never complete without it. But I know as well as you do, it's the spread that makes hot, crisp toast taste so good. And I expect that's why so many families insist on parquet margarine, a spread with a flavor that's really fresh and sweet and delicate. Millions of families prefer Parquet margarine to any other brand, and for very good reason, too, because Parquet's fine, fresh flavor is still unmatched. So buy a package of this delicious, economical spread, P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. It's high in food energy value and contains important vitamin A. Try delicious, nourishing Parquet on your breakfast toast tomorrow. <laughs> You know, it's a funny thing, little foot. I mean, light foot. <laughs> uh, when I saw you walk in there tonight, you know, I had the idea that maybe you were interested in Leela Ransom. <laughs> you know something? I had the same idea about you. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> Just a neighbor, old man. Well, you know the old saying. Love thy neighbor. <laughs> Very good. I'll kill that kid. <laughs> good night, everybody. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. You can just bet the cheese-flavored dishes will make a hit with your family and guests when they're made with delicious Pabstep cheese food. Pabstep melts luscious smooth into an appetizing cheese sauce for eggs, fish, and macaroni. Pabstep also makes a grand sandwich spread, toasts to perfection, slices neatly for serving with pie or fruit desserts. Pabstep is nourishing, easy to digest, a treat on all occasions. So buy both varieties of this delicious cheese food, Golden Cheddar Pabstet and Pimento Pabstet.